please welcome the talented, beautiful, and inspiring Adina Menzel. Hi. Hi, Drew. Can the ladies organize my, my, my clutter in my kitchen? That's what I, I need to take away from this in addition to meeting you. I just, my, my whole thing is, what do you do with someone like me who's always just been a slob? Well, you can't do it all. Like, you know, maybe you need a junk drawer so you can go out and like do what do. you do that freaks out everybody on the planet. <laughs> because I think that you've been such an amazing role model to girls and women. Oh, thank um, you. And you're such an icon. Uh, how do you like, does that, is that, pressure some to be like yeah it does I <laughs> I imagine um, I think it's the one of those things that's like the most beautiful gift and sometimes a curse because I thank my lucky stars every day that I'm associated with some of these wonderful roles and young women that have these incredible empowering messages and that I get to be on a stage when we're not in a pandemic and sing to a sea of young girls in blue dresses. And on the other hand, I'm a woman in her forties. Um, I'm a mess. I, my kitchen's a, a, a pigsty. I feel like a failure. And it's like, you've chosen me to, to lift up your young little girls and boys. I don't know. And so um, I contend with that a lot of just feeling like a hypocrite. And then I figure if I just put it out there and I'm authentic about it, that, that at least you won't, you know, I don't, I, I fake it till I make it, that's all I can say. <laughs> well, ironically, as a mom, I always saw also so many girls gravitate towards Elsa and I was like, oh, the complicated one, interesting. And <laughs> what was so great is that the love story was between sisters. Like, oh I my know. gosh, I hadn't really seen that before. And I have a younger sister, three years younger than me. I actually brought her to the Oscars my first time when I was singing let it go at the Oscars. And I brought my sister and my sister is one of these women that I, this month and every day of our lives, um, look up to and honor. And um, I brought her from Boulder, Colorado, her and her husband relocated for the pandemic. We rented a house nearby that has a little pool and a little, um, like a pool house that we convert into a schoolhouse. And she does a pod because she's a fifth grade teacher and my son is in fifth grade. So it's my son and three other kids. Well, as schools have been tasked to think differently, parents have been tasked to have to do differently. And I did homeschool before I started this job for six months. And I think I lost 10 years of my life. I've I never- know. Did you overhear what they're supposed to hand in? But it was like, did you do this, honey? Did you do this? It's like, get off my back, mom. I want space, but then I want to make sure he's being a good student and he's not going to miss everything. And it's just- and he's, and he also did, you know, the kids start to figure out that they can put these virtual backgrounds on, or I'm not going to tell you who, but one of his friends had a, took a couple of shots of himself. He's so um, resourceful of, in different positions like this, like this, whatever. And then they would, he would walk away from the screen no. and then flash different shots. So it looked like he was still live and switching positions. <laughs> That's so Ferris Bueller genius. Like when he would put the mannequin in exactly. the bed with like the snoring sounds. And yeah. I've never felt, I've never felt honestly as a self-loathing, challenged. It has been the hardest, most incredible year, which is why teachers it's have never been more appreciated or in the heroic forefront. No, I'm totally with you. And um, if you do want to see a mom in um, being delirious over a pandemic, um, check out this little kid show that I went up into my son's tree house that he never even goes in. And I had to go up there to film myself or something. And um, I started singing to my camera and reading a story and decided I wanted to be the next Mrs. Rogers. But um, if you want to check it out, we're going to have a second episode coming out soon. And hopefully people will uh, can, can watch with their little kids and also have an escape and put them in front of the iPad with something somewhat quality. And if you go to our show website at thedrewbarrymarshow.com, we'll have a feature on it and a link right to it as well. Thank you. And um, I, the I Am Every Woman campaign, um, this is so important, Women's History Month. Will you please tell us about this campaign and why it's important to you? Yes, it's this age-old organization that, uh, called CARE that did the care package. That's where the, that name comes from. Oh. And they go around the world uplifting 
women and young girls out of poverty. That's, that's what they do. And so they teamed up with International Women's Day to do this campaign this year. And then I got to go in the studio with one of my all time uh, um, idols. I used to sing at weddings and bar mitzvahs um, before I got my big break and I would sing Through the Fire. I do know that song. Shaka Khan was a hero of mine. Um, just She's one of the greatest singers of all time. And I was in the studio <laughs> with her. It's a big week, Drew and Shaka Khan. Come oh, on, I'm doing good. That's so exciting, Shaka Khan. Oh she's my gosh. incredible. She's well, got it. Thank you for doing that. The history of the care package, Adina Shaka Khan, mm -hmm. and Women's History Month is one of the most potent combinations I've ever heard of. Adina Menzel, I'm so excited to make your acquaintance. And you too. I really am. Thank you for having me. I'm honored to be on your show. Thank you. Thank you so much.